take pills. Anybody here have to take pills? <laughs> take pills, okay. Well, my dad, when, before he died, he was taking so many pills that my mother had to remind him because he forgot. <laughs> and so he had this big container of so many pills, and he forget to take them. So he had to have someone to remind him. And uh, I tell you one thing: there's a, there's narcotics and and uh, addicts out there. They never get to take their pills. I can tell you that. So these pills must be non-addictive, or you wouldn't forget to take them. But I got six soft pills for every one of you. I want you to lay your head on them, okay? Six soft pills, okay? And they're all in one chapter of the Bible, in the book of Philippians, and it's in chapter 4. Therefore, my beloved brethren, whom I long to see, my joy and crown, stand fast in the Lord. Now, how many of you have ever had disgust in your heart? Did any of you ever had disgust? Yes, yes. Disgusted. Just plain, it just, life is just nothing but disgust. Okay? Well, what he's saying here is, you've got to adjust. There's a big difference between disgust and adjust. What he's saying here is, you can stand fast in what you do and what you believe and who you are right now if you just make the adjustments and ask God to help you to make the adjustments. Now, how many of you are new to this home right here? Uh, you've just come in here in the last year or so. Anybody here? Last year? Okay. You've had to make some adjustments, haven't you? Now you're either going to get disgust or you're going to adjust. Which one do you think you should do? Adjust. Amen. You got it. Okay. That's pill number one. Can you swallow that one? Okay. Here's pill number two. It's a soft pill. It's found in verse five. He said, be patient in the midst of all man. The Lord is near. How near is the Lord? How near is the Lord? It's very near. And he says, Let your patient spirit be made known to all men, and don't be anxious for anything, but in everything. Pray, make supplication, and be thankful, and let your requests be made known to God. So my second pill is this. Don't just sit in the chair I mean, I could sit in the chair where you are, but I'm more concerned about the affair of life than the chair of life. Are you with me? Okay, so I'm going to sit where you sit right now. I feel so sorry for myself. I hate to be in this place right now. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just want to sit in this chair here, and I just don't know how long I can bear it. I don't know if I can go on any longer. Or you can make life an affair. Ah, look at those fans. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> look at that clock. I can still tell time. I can, I can tell time. I'm pretty smart. Why, well, it's 3 o'clock. There's a lot of people who aren't smart enough to figure that out. And look at that beautiful fireplace over there. Isn't that wonderful? And a puzzle. Man, I haven't had a puzzle since I was seven years old. And you got them here in this place. That's exciting, buddy. That's, that's really exciting. And look at those pretty flowers out there. Wow. Ain't that beautiful? And the sun, it rose this morning. The sun's going to set tonight. And, you know, you go down here and you see these pretty girls running around here. And uh, some of the prettiest girls in the world. And they're all serving food and cleaning places up for you, making life comfortable for you. I think I'm going to join up with you. Would you have me? <laughs> you see, life, you got to make an affair out of it. It's not just a chair. All right? He says, make your request known to God. And 
if you do that, you can rise out of that chair in your own mind and live the most abundant, exciting life this side of heaven. Amen. All right, now the third pill. Amen. You know, some people are physically disabled. <coughs> okay? How many of you are physically disabled? Anybody here physically disabled? Okay, one person's physically disabled. Now, I'm deaf, as you can see. I've got a cochlear implant on this side, and I've got a hearing aid on this side. I was so deaf one day, I didn't even know I was deaf. <laughs> I went to the doctor. He examined me. He said, man, you're deaf. I said, but what are you going to do? He said, there's nothing I can do for you. I said, I can't even hear myself burp. <laughs> he said, ah, I'll give you something to burp louder. I guarantee you don't want to be around me when I burp because I really have to burp loud to hear myself. <laughs> but I had to make the adjustment and I may be physically disabled, but I'm not mentally disabled. Are you with me? I still have my mind. Thank God I still got my mind. Now, I have a mother who has dementia. She's got a pretty nice body. She can walk, she can get around, but she's mentally She's not able to even concentrate. She could not remember what I said just now. She would forget it within a minute. And I had an elder in my church. He died at 97. I went to see him, and he was sitting there. He was crippled from head to foot, crippled. I said, man, I pray for you, Brother Barton. He said, just thank God. You don't have to pray for me. Just thank God I still got my mind. He said, I don't have a body. You may be physically disabled, but the strong pill I'm going to give you is a good dose of mental ability. You're not mentally disabled, and you're understanding everything I'm saying, aren't you? So you see, you've got a lot to live for as you take that third pill. Now I'm going to give you a fourth pill. This one here is found in verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is a good report, if there's excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, then think on these things. This pill is entitled, Life Cannot Be Bought. But life must be sought. Mm -hmm. Just dwell on that one for a minute. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And everything you need will be added to you. I want to tell you right now, <clears throat> everything you need, you've already got it. And you've got to dwell mentally you can't dwell on the misfortunes. You've got to dwell on his fortunes. You can't dwell on setbacks. You've got to dwell on stepping stones. You can't dwell on failures. You've got to dwell on accomplishments. Amen. And you can't dwell on where you're at right now. You've got to dwell on where you're going. Amen. Life is a process. And that pill simply means life can be sure. The fifth pill I'm going to give you is this. Have you ever felt loneliness? Anybody ever here feel lonely? Okay. I'm going to ask you to replace loneliness with holiness. Now, holiness, say that word, holiness. 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 The Bible says be holy. God is holy. Holiness means separation. Did you realize that in your body there is a spirit? Right? right. That's what makes you different from animals and plants. <clears throat> you have a spirit living right inside of you. Now just think, if you are in a circumstance where things are pretty perplexing, and yet you reach down and you tap your inner spirit. You've had it all along. And you've 
bring up something that you never knew you had. Your spirit is the most valuable part of you. Mm -hmm. How long is your body going to live? Till death, right? Yeah. Right. How long is your spirit going to live? Forever. Forever. So, don't dwell on loneliness. Dwell on holiness. And touch your spirit and leave it. My last pill is this. And uh, it's found over here as he, he wraps up this thing. He says, The Lord be with your spirit. My God shall supply all your needs according to the riches of Jesus Christ. To God the Father be glory forever and greet each other in Jesus Christ. Have you ever heard that expression, you're only as old as you feel? <laughs> Have you ever heard that? <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> it is. Suppose you feel bad today. <coughs> if you feel bad, then you're old. You're really old if you feel bad, right? If you're as old as you feel. I don't believe I'm as old as I feel. I'm 75. My mom's 95. I, she was 20 years old when I was born, and she's still living. She's got dementia, too. I told you how. It's pretty hard. It's pretty hard dealing with her. But I told her, Mom... You're only as old as you deal. You've got to deal with it. You can't let it get you down. You can't let it make you mad. You can't let it, you can't become nasty. Look, I'm 90, I, I'm, I told my kids, you know, they're in their 50s. I said, me getting old doesn't give me the excuse to be an old tank, tankerous coot. Just getting old doesn't give me the excuse to be down in the mouth about everything. You see, getting old is not as old as I feel, it's as old as I deal. And I've got to deal with everything that comes my way, and I'm going to handle it with God's help. I was in Ormond Beach yesterday. I had breakfast at the motel. And as I was eating this, old woman came in. She was limping. She sat down. And as I went to get my breakfast, she reached out like that. I don't know the woman from, from Eve. Don't, I've never seen her before. She reached out like that. And big tears started pouring down her cheeks. And I looked over and said, man, what's wrong? And she pulled out her cell phone, showed me a picture of a man that had been the best friend she ever had. Her husband had died, and this friend of hers was just a friend. Or not a boyfriend, but just an acquaintance that she really was able to turn to. And this man's sister texted her on this day and said he just died 15 minutes ago. She was devastated. She was crying like a little baby. And I went over and I put my arm around her and I said, Honey, I said, do you believe in angels? She said, I sure do. I said, I believe Jesus wants me to be your angel right now. And I put my arm around her and I prayed and prayed for her. And when I got done praying, she says, how would God ever send you at such a time as this when I needed someone like you so badly? Unless he saw my hurt, my need, my sorrow. And I want to tell you, I went out of that place with tears in my eyes, feeling better than she did. That God allowed me to pray for somebody in need. Amen. You know, they tell me of a home someplace in heaven. And I pray that someday I'll see you all in that place. Because it is indeed a beautiful place. <laughs>
on them pills. And I guarantee you'll be running up 